What is up everybody, Mr. Hisner here, and today we looked at the properties of congruence, and now we are going to continue by looking at examples of what this means. Now, just remember that segments, angles, um, triangles, any figure, those figures have congruencies. They do not have equalities. However, whenever you're dealing with a measurement, whenever you're dealing with a number, um, the number has the property of equality. And so what we're going to do is really just look at the, the, um, how these work together. So what I would like to do, let's take a look at, uh, let's take a look at, let's say number, number two, number two. What that? Okay. So if K is between J and L, oh, so we're back to the drawing. So let's just see if K is between J and L. So here's J, here's L, K is somewhere between, then we can take JK, right? This measurement plus KL, and it's going to be equal to the whole thing. Well, that to me looks like the segment addition. That's segment addition. We are adding measures. So that's the segment addition postulate. So that's, that's what that is looking like down there. Um, let us look at, let's look at number four. So, okay, we have if this is true, then this happens. So the way I like to think about this is like this happens first. So first we have this or this is what we're given. Um, and then something happens. So this is kind of second. So what I look at is how did these two things change? Here I have RS is equal to TU, and here I have RS plus XY is equal to TU plus XY. Um, these are measurements. These are measurements of segments. And what happened here? Well, it looks like, you know, how these are different is second, there's a plus XY to both sides. And now, you know, you might be looking at this and thinking like, I don't know what the heck I'm looking at. However, these are numbers, right? So you're allowed to... <clears throat> add <coughs> x, y to both sides, right? R, s, this could be the number 7, this could be x, this could be 11, and 11, right? You're allowed to add a number to both sides. That is the property of algebra. That's the property of equality. This is actually the addition property of equality. What's happening? Well, I'm adding two things to both sides. This is the addition property. <coughs> of equality. Um, and that's the idea here is that you want to look at whenever you see something like this, you want to see like, how did this change? Um, what happened here? Right? Look at number eight. Number eight is again, very similar, very similar. I'm going to hop down here to number eight. So this is what we had first. <coughs> I have a whole frog in my throat. And this is what we have second. And we want to know what changed. Well, here's from our first thing. It looked like, it looks like there's a CD over here like a plus CD, and, but these EF and AB, these are still here. <clears throat> so we got rid of CD, and we got rid of a CD, the measure of CD, from both sides. How could we possibly do that? Well, we could subtract it from both sides. Then these two would cancel, right? Yeah, and then we'd be left with just AB and EF. AB is equal to EF. And again, this is, this is the subtraction property. <clears throat> wow, we got a whole frog in the throat. Subtraction property. Uh, yeah, so uh, what we're gonna do here for our classwork is we're gonna go through and try to match some of these and see um, if we can do it twice. Or some of these will be used twice, that is true. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah, that's what we're going to be doing. And again, you for you you will have this uh, sort of number, this property bank that you'll be able to pull through. So this is going to be a matching exercise. So hopefully we can get through this, um, and this will help you understand the application of these properties further. Thanks for watching.